Hey ladies, thank you so much for joining me for this session of the Build Your Craft and Career Summit. I have an amazing woman with today who's going to talk about um, how she started her very first business of being a licensed contractor at 23 years old. And um, so Susan, thank you so much for joining the show. And tell us how, how did you even do that at 23 years old? Like how did you build your first house and become a licensed contractor? Um, you know, you do not look like what most people think of as a licensed contractor, right? Like and, <laughs> and so how did you do that? Let us give us a little glimpse into that time. Uh, many, many years ago, you now have four children, which is hard to believe as well. Tell us, like, how did you do that? How did you get started? Yeah, no, absolutely. So yeah, so I mean, I grew up, my grandfather was a builder. My dad was a builder. So we grew up kind of, I always say we grew up in the dirt. We were always on job sites. We were always, you know, yeah. watching them. They were building houses. They were rolling driveways. I don't know why they had us on the job sites, but yeah, that did. was like five or six. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that was my playground. <laughs> so we grew up almost identically. Okay. So I was kind you know, so I was kind of in, and I have an older brother. He's about a year and a half older than me. And of course I wanted to do everything that he did. And they let him do everything. They let him go in the trucks. They let him, yeah. you know, do all that stuff. And, you know, but I couldn't do it. They said, because I was a girl. So I, I blame them <laughs> because if they let me go in the truck, I probably would have lost interest. Um, right. So I kind of grew up in, you know, watching, you know, watching that happen, watching, you know, my grandfather, you know, developing properties and, you know, my dad would do client work and um, they, all came over from Italy. So as a kid, I was, you know, he was always having me write estimates and he was always having me kind of go to the job site. So I think just growing up in it, I kind of had the bug. And when I was, um, I think it was 23 when I built my first back home and I just had the, you know, the itch to build, to build a house. And my grandmother came over to my house and she said, please do not get into this business. You're crazy. She's like, don't do it. <laughs> But there was no, I, I had already made up my mind and I, and I got licensed and um, just jumped right in. Yeah. So not everybody knows what a spec house is, right? Oh, sorry. I, grew up, I grew up in that time period where all, if you, if you had a dad who was a builder, they were all called spec houses, but not everybody actually knows what that term is now, right? Because you don't, it's not done the same these days. So explain what a spec house is. So basically it was a piece of land that we purchased and spec is on speculation that someone will buy it. So you're basically taking a risk build it first, right? Build it first and then hopefully sell it for a profit. Yeah. And can you take me back to that experience when you first bought the property? Yes. When do you remember what you paid for the land? <clears throat> what did we, yes, I paid $200,000. Oh. Okay. So that was a nice piece of land back then because uh, it was actually a really bad piece of land. Yeah, but 200,000 is pretty, I mean, how big was the property? It was uh, about a quarter acre. Wow. Okay. Cause that thinking back in California, but that still would have been a pretty good piece of property. So you bought the land. How exciting was that when you first like saw your name on the deed, like paid the money? Was that incredible or what? Yeah, it was, you know, now that I look back on it, I'm like, oh my goodness, like, what was I thinking? But at the time I just, you know, I was just kind of going forward. I just wanted, you know, I just wanted to do it. So I had actually, the, the piece of land had come on the market and it was a terrible piece of land. It was conservation. There was a stream in the back. I had no idea about soil conditions or anything. And I think every Great. other builder in town was laughing at me. Um, but, you know, but I, you know, I just kind of went in like a bull. Um, and just kind of jumped right in. Um, and you know, it was, it, it had conservation It had an order of conditions It had all kinds of hurdles that we had to go around, but I just, you know, I was just had my mind made up. <laughs> and so how proud were you when the actual structure went up and you saw it going up and then you're like, wow, it went from nothing like dirt and all these problems. Right. And then you solved all these problems and then you saw this building, this house there, like, what did that feel like when you did that the very first time? Yeah, no, I mean, it was, it was cool. I mean, it's been, you know, 17 years and I'm still, you know, we're still, we're still doing it. I'm still building homes. So it's, yeah. um, yeah, I still drive by it sometimes. I'm like, they, they need to paint the trim. Um, yeah. <laughs> but you know, it's a cool, it's, it's cool seeing it go up and, you know, and the, you know, you have the plans and then, 
you know, we made some changes, change the front a little bit, you know, just things like that as, as you're going. And that's what I like about, you know, we do client work and, um, you know, custom homes and spec homes where we purchase them and we kind of have full reign on them. And those are, you know, those are fun because we, I can kind of do what I want. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, that's a great transition. So now, you know, 17 years later, you're married, you have four children, uh, which is a lot. I just had my first grandbaby, uh, but four children, I can imagine they're all fairly young, right. Given your age. Um, so how, like bring us up to speed to now the business you have catalog homes, um, in the Boston area, you do all kinds of huge remodels. Um, you do renovations, like talk, talk through what you do, like on a daily basis, or what is the business doing now within Cadillac Homes? Sure. Yeah. So we have, um, still have the construction company where we're doing client work and we do, you know, we do most of our smaller projects will be like an entire first floor renovation, you know, kitchen, bathrooms, living room, all of that, um, all the way up to new builds. Um, and we'll do those custom for clients. That's probably about 75 or 80% of our work. And then another, you know, 20 percent ish is properties that we purchase and we either rebuild or renovate. So that's the bulk of our um, construction work. And then we also have a real estate brokerage. Um, I also kind of at the same time when I was 20, when I got my real estate license, so I kind of got into, you know, I, I've always kind of done both because they're so related. Yeah. Um, so we have the real estate brokerage um, and that's, you know, that's kind of the bulk of the business. Now we have a pretty good social media footprint. Um, we have the show Renovation Rekindle that we just finished season one on. Yeah. Um, yeah. So the business is, you know, crazy. So day to day I can be, um, you know, like today I was applying, you know, doing permit paperwork. I can, I've already been on a few job sites this morning. Um, you know, so we're just kind of, you know, handling things as they come, I guess. Yeah. What's sort of your favorite part or do you just love, I love the variety of construction. So the reasons I like is like no day is ever the same, but do you have certain things that you just like the best, like meeting a client for the first time or doing the first walkthrough or demo day or like, like what's your top five things you love about like working in the trades, right? Like being in the construction industry and owning a company. I'm glad you said five because I was like, there's no way. Yeah. Yeah. Well, okay, maybe 10. Like, I mean, I have probably 15 to 20, but you can right. do five to 10. Okay. All right. So one is definitely like walking into a space and thinking about, okay, like, what can this, what can this be? This doesn't belong there. We got to, you know, we've got to move this. Um, yeah. And just kind of getting through the whole process, um, you know, seeing the clients at the end when they finally see the space, like that's such an emotional process. Yeah. Um, the whole, the whole process, especially when you're dealing with clients, you know, clients, it's your, their home is disrupted. Every, you know, everything's kind of out of order of their normal day to day. Yeah. So kind of getting clients through that process and knowing that even if in the moment they're a little, you know, frustrated that maybe it's not done quick enough. It's, I always tell them it's never, it, <laughs> yeah, always it, takes never too long. <laughs> <laughs> it always takes too long and it always costs too much always. Um, but, you know, knowing that, you know, seeing in the end, you know, how they, how they see when they walk into the space yeah, and how they feel, you know, after seeing that. And then I also just like being able to do so many things because, you know, I go into the tile store and I'm like, I love those, you know, all of these 10 oh, things that room. don't go together. Yes. <laughs> but I can say, okay, this one's going to go in this project. This one's going to go in this project. Or sometimes I'll see a tile and I'll say, okay, I'm gonna, I don't know where I'm going to use that yet, but I'm going to use it somewhere. I love it. Yeah. I love it. This thing's going in a house somewhere. Yeah. Exactly. Um, uh, speaking of that, though, what are your top like five vendors? Five vendors or um, showrooms or places that you go to that you just really get unusual stuff there, or is very inspiring for you? Because you know we're both in the business of our business is completely visual, so we see a th thousands of choices, right? So uh -huh. like we have sort of certain things that just always inspire us, right? So like, do you have some vendors or businesses that you feel you are your kind of go tos that you go back to a lot? Yeah. So we have, so every project we do, I try, we always try to do something custom or something that's special for the homeowner. Mm -hmm. Um, so we have, um, you know, like we have a carpenter who, you know, I come up with something crazy. I give him a terrible drawing and I'm like, <laughs> can we make this, but like straight and pretty. Um, yeah. and you know, so like things like that and working with different materials, like there's a you know place locally that has all different kinds of plywoods and 
yeah. um, finished, you know, finished wood and playing with that. We have another vendor who um, he'll do, you know, custom uh, wood countertops. He'll do custom doors for us playing yeah. with like different types of glass. So things like that. I, you know, I like to try to bring something unique into every project. Yeah. What's your favorite tile store? I'm curious. Cause you're, well, cause you're on the East coast. So I'm kind of curious. Yeah. Like, I'm curious what's different West coast versus East coast. So we have a lot of small tile places around and I'll be honest. I, I, it's not unusual that I would go to like four of them for one project and okay. a little from here, a little from there. So yeah. we have, um, Jen Rose nearby us. We have a Dell tile nearby us. Okay. Um, we have a tile showcase. We have, um, I'm trying to think of who else. And sometimes they're, they're, like fire, fire clay has some cool tile. We're using yeah. their, theirs in a project um, that's coming up. They have some cool like star and cross tile. I love those. Um, yeah. so I'm like, like a kid waiting for my Christmas present to come so I can yeah. open it and look at it. <laughs> so not a lot of national tile vendors. You're doing much smaller vendors basically. We have, yeah, I don't, it, we don't really have a lot of national tile vendors nearby. We have a, a, we have a lot of small, New England's very funny that way. It's very, um, a lot of small towns. We have a lot of small um, vendors close by. Nice. Okay. So that kind of brings us up to speed with what you're doing. Um, and so can you talk a little bit about, I mean, you know, this whole summit's all about like women either coming in as a young lady uh, maybe she doesn't want to go to college. Maybe she's already been to college, but she's really looking for something creative, something that's where she doesn't have to sit behind a desk every day, right? Which is like my biggest thing. Uh, what would you say to a young lady who's considering this as a career? Or, I mean, there's so many ways to get into the trades, not even just as an employee, but owning your own company, running your own company. Like, what would you say to that young lady who's 20 years old? Like, why should she do it, right? Why should she consider it? Yeah. I mean, I kind of jumped in and, and started on my own. Like, luckily I had, you know, some, some mentors, some other, you know, builders and contractors who I knew who probably said she's <laughs> crazy. She just exactly. bought that lot. And they kind of helped me. They were like, okay, do you know what you're doing? And I was like, not really, but I'll figure it out. Um, so that's just kind of my personality that has kind of jumped into it. But, you know, I would say, you know, don't, don't be afraid. I mean, learn as much as you can. Um, you know, especially at the very beginning, I spent a ton of time on the job sites, you know, I was there all day just because, you know, you have to learn, you know, learning all of the logistics of, you know, framing and structure and, you know, all of that stuff, because I think as a woman, you get questioned more than, you know, than guys do. I mean, I've had the experience where I go to apply for a permit and I'm told, you can't apply for the permit. The contractor has to be here. Well, here's my license. Or I get told, or I had one where I went to apply for a permit and I started getting quizzed on insulation values. He said, I can't give you a permit. And I said, well, why not? I have all my stuff here. And then I, and then he quizzed me and I guess I passed because then he gave me my permit on the spot. But, you know, you, you, you deal with that and, and yeah. you move on and don't, you know, try not to get hung up on it and just move past it. And, um, you know, I think if you go in and, and you're confident in your, you know, learning as much as you can, you know, at the very beginning, you're, you know, you're going to make mistakes. That's any business, not just this business. Um, and, you know, it's, it's a great field. And that was the thing for me when I was in high school, I had a, a desk job and it was only part-time and I was like, oh no, I am not going to survive if I have to <laughs> sit. That was going to be one of my questions is how did you even, like, why didn't you do something else? You know, why did you, not go to college or you might, I mean, I went to college, but I still came into this because I just got tired of sitting behind a desk. I was just bored. Yeah. Yeah. No, I couldn't. I, I, I worked actually at a bank and it, <laughs> anyway, I was 16. I'll never forget. And I was like, Oh, I was like, this is depressing. I just, I just didn't have the personality. Like some people, they love it and they have that personality and they, you know, and they need that, you know, kind of routine day to day. I was kind of going out of my mind and I was like, Oh my God. I was like, I cannot. Yeah. If you're watching the desk. clock, like that was always my, right. like, if you're watching like 10 minutes go by, 15 minutes go by, an yeah. hour go by and you're like, oh my God, there's five more hours to go. Like, that's a good indicator. You should be in this industry right. because 
You're, there's always something you can be doing and you get yep. to manage your own time and you get to be really creative yes. and you get to problem solve, I think is the biggest confidence builder because you're, you're just solving problems and things that are happening all day. Mm-hmm. And, um, I think women are particularly good at doing that at not maybe getting as upset. Uh, not, not everybody, but I think we're really good at solving issues and finding creative solutions to things. Totally. Um, you know, so I don't know if that was your experience, but it so- it sounds like it was. Yeah, no, definitely. I mean, I knew I, I wasn't gonna be able to sit in one place. I loved the variety of going, you know, to different projects and, you know, we need to do this, or this is in the way we need to figure this out. It's, it's funny because my husband says that every construction company should have a female, <laughs> should have a female around, um, yeah. you know, because it's, you know, it's, something, you know, bringing more organization and a different perspective. Um, because really a, a lot of, you know, home renovations are started by women, by a female, right. That there were a lot of times it's women who want to remodel the kitchen or, you know, or, or, or do something. And sometimes, you know, we'll go, my husband and I will go look at projects and, um, you know, sometimes the wife will say, you know, we had contractors in here. No one spoke to me. And we're like, why would no one speak to you? We know that, you know, most of the time you're the driver behind the project. So, and I think it, you know, it helps other women who are looking to do a project feel comfortable when there's another woman involved. Yeah. It's a, I feel like it's a huge competitive advantage that most women don't see as a huge advantage to make their advantage. I think Uh, you mentioned your husband. So uh, not everybody knows they may assume that he's the one who started the business, but actually you started the business and you brought him in after many, many years. So can you talk about like, you know, what was the decision-making behind that? You, you had already spent, you know, how many years building this business yourself and then what made you want to bring him in? And, um, you know, why was he qualified? <laughs> let's, let's do the opposite. Of what we like, why would you hire her? Right. Totally. Totally. So my, yeah. So my husband, so, so we had met and he, um, had been trying to get on our fire department and he, um, so he was taking the test for 12 years and I always clarify this because it wow. sounds like he failed or something, but in order to stay on the te- on the list, you have to continuously take the test and you can't get on the test unless, I mean, on the list. It just shows me how much for. commitment he had though. I mean, exactly. 12 years. Yeah. 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 I and love, he... I love a committed man. <laughs> I, I, love that. I said, that's how I knew you had potential. Cause I was like, wow, he just kept going at it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So he was taking a test to be a firefighter. Yep. So he finally got on the department. Um, and he, so they work 24 hour shifts. So he works, you know, one day on two days off one day on, and then I think it's like four days off. So, you know, he said, Oh, I'm going to have all this time off. I'm going to go golf. And I was like, Oh no, you're not. <laughs> I was like, where do you think you're going? I was like, no, you're going to come on the job site. So I kind of, you know, so I pulled him in and he, you know, and he came in and at that time it was kind of during the recession. So we were doing projects that were, you know, not, not pretty, a lot of structural work, a lot of hard work. And he, you know, he kind of came on board during that time and, you know, learned the business and, you know, and came into the business with me. So, um, he still has not been able to golf. Um, but (laughs) You basically took the idea of a honeydew list. Yeah. <laughs> you really, really, really put him to work. It's like I have a really long, long list, actually. So yeah. Okay. And you guys work fairly well together. I know my husband's an electrician, so we've worked on many, many jobs together. Um, <laughs> how long did it take you guys to get to kind of like a little, you know, your own little like sweet spot of like boundaries and like who does what? And like, do we talk during work, at work, at dinner? Like, how long did it take for that to happen? Yeah. Well, work never ends. I can say that we always talk, we're always, you know, that's always going on. Um, you know, especially since we, we own the company. So it's, you know, it just, it's always it's like another baby. <laughs> it's always there. Um, but yeah, no, I mean, we, in some ways, I think it was easier for him to come into the business because he, you know, could understand, you know, whereas, you know, before he was in the business, he went, you know, why are you always on your phone? What's going on? Does that need to be done right now? And now I think it's, you know, since he's been in, it's easier because he fully understands, okay, like this is happening, this project, this needs to happen now, this is time sensitive. So, um, you know, and as we've gone along, he's, you know, I'm, he's, he brought in some, you know, efficiencies into the business that, you know, I kind of grew up learning, you know, learning from my dad and different things that he did. Um, So as he came in, you know, he does a lot of, 
the the management and um, you know, and helping with just streamlining, you know, a lot more streamlining. So that's yeah. been and awesome. it's really nice to have what I found is it's just nice to have like a, you know, they always say like a woman needs a soft place to fall. And it's if you're a contractor as a woman, it's so lovely to have a husband that actually really understands just how hard you fucking work yeah. and really understand the mental capacity it takes, right? It's incredibly mentally there's a lot going on. And so be, right. to be, have someone that really sees you for who you are and still loves that and admires that it's priceless for me to have a husband like that. So, um, I'm Sorry. kudos that you have someone like that. Um, so let's talk about kids. I mean, we have so many women in our audience who would not choose this career because they think you cannot be a mother and be successful in the trades. And you have four children. So, and several versions of your business, right? Lots of different chapters within it. So how do you manage that? Like, give us some tips, give us some hacks. What's the mindset? Parenting, like all of it, dish about it. How do you make it yeah. work? <laughs> when you I have five on. nannies, like, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> so we do have nannies. Um, yeah, I mean, it's just, um, this is my, this is my child coming on. <laughs> <laughs> Adorable. Love that. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, I mean, it definitely, you know, they say it takes a village. It, it definitely does, but it's always, you know, we do have, you know, nannies who help us just because I find that I, I have always found that easier, especially with, with the hours. And, you know, some days you're out the door super early. Some days it's more flexible okay. so that, you know, we've had, um, you but know, you one of our, have nannies in the beginning. We are right. no, no, right. no. So uh, what were you doing before you were making money and like things were working and you have plenty of profit? Like, what were you doing when you didn't? Like, how were you managing that? Yeah, no, I mean, it was, you know, a lot of the times I would try to just get as much work done as I could while kids were in school. Um, I would have my grandmother um, who uh, is, she's, uh, she's, I think she's 88 now, but she would help with, you know, she had one day a week and, you yeah. know, just have family help and, um you know, just try to do as much as I could while they were in school. And yeah, you no, know, you just kind of, you just kind of do what you can and make it, make it work. Um, but you never that part out because I don't remember it being anything crazy. <laughs> you don't, you don't like it. You never even consider just not doing things because of children or yeah. felt bad that you're not a good enough mother. Like it never, I mean, I've just met you, but you seem like you'd be a really lovely mother. So did it, did it just, you know, so many women, they, they hold themselves back from doing things and it's just their own thoughts. Like they think, well, I must be a terrible mother because I'm pursuing my own creative, amazing interests. Like what, what inside of you made you think, no, this is like a beautiful thing. I love doing this. And my children are going to admire this in me. Like, yeah, what do you they, think that, you know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, I'll say you know, as the kids have activities and as they have things, it's always like, you know, we go, go to as many of those as, you know, as we can. And we're always, you know, so we're not like always working and never going to any of the kids stuff. That's yeah. one thing. And then another thing is we do involve the kids. Like my oldest son, he's super interested. Sometimes he'll see me doing paperwork. Like, you know, what are you doing? Yeah. And we explain it to them, um, you know, if, if they're interested um, and, you know, just let them see what we're doing and let them see, you know, you know, how sometimes that, you know, they want to be involved and they, you know, they have questions and, and they're curious. So I, you know, I don't think it's a bad, um, I, I think it's good for them to see, to see, you know, to see their mom pursue, you know, pursue things and, yeah. um, you know, build something. Yeah. And so of your children who are girls and who are boys, like so the two oldest are girls and the two youngest are boys. Okay. And so have you seen a difference in, those, the do your daughters, do they feel like this would be a viable career choice for them? So my oldest daughter, she's interested in painting. Okay. Um, my oldest son is, he's very interested in the business side. He's, yeah. you know, so it's, it's, um, it's very funny because when I'm doing paperwork, he always wants to know like what I'm doing and, mm -hmm. you know, and how things are done. Like he's interested in the houses, but he's interested in more of the business side. So at the back end, that's yeah. great. Nice. Yes. And then my youngest, I don't know. He's, um, how was your, how old is your youngest? He's nine. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Well, you just do not look old enough to have four <laughs> kids starting at nine going up. Um, 
Okay, so so that kind of gives us a good like background of where you guys are and what you're doing. So let's kind of talk about some of the more fun, you know, the fun stuff that's coming up. Sure. Um, I know we've you've talked briefly that you guys have a home decor shop that's coming up with um, furniture and organization. So what made you think of doing like an online brand? You know, like there's the in real life parts where you're really physically building and modeling and doing all that. What made you want to do something even bigger than that and real build like a larger brand around, which is, you know, relatively just a traditional construction company, right? Like what's different about now, the opportunity, I think for women in the trades that are building their own business, they can do things very differently than like our dads did. Right. Absolutely. So talk a little bit about that shop and what's coming up. That's kind of fun and exciting about it. Yeah. So we've been, um, so we've been kind of building our social media presence. My husband is, we call him the chief fun officer because he always makes everything fun. He's always, <laughs> you know, he's, he's always making things, things that are serious. He's always trying to, you know, lighten everything up. And I think that's part of, you know, being a firefighter and trying to, you know, say, okay, this is not so serious. It's a house. Things can be fixed. It's everything's going to be fine. Um, so we started putting videos out about five years ago and that kind of grew, you know, grew, started growing the brand and started growing the social media presence and, you know, and then different, different things came up and, you know, we've had people, you know, from, we had someone in Florida reach out to us because they saw one of our uh, custom island tops that we made. And they said, we, you know, we want one of those. So we've had people kind of reaching out to us saying, we've seen this in your project, where can we get it? And a lot of times it's stuff that we've custom made. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, just kind of sharing that, making some of that stuff accessible and, you know, helping people who, you know, maybe they're doing their own project and, you know, giving some inspiration or seeing a project that we've done saying, oh, my house is like that. I didn't, you know, I didn't know if I could do that with my house and it gives someone an idea or gives someone, yeah. um, you know, a thought for their own project. So that's kind of where, um, you know, the thought of the shop came into play and just, um, you know, more curating stuff that we're doing so that it's more accessible. Nice. Um, yeah. And so with, within say home decor, what are you guys planning just so we can, you know, when it comes out, we can maybe buy some stuff like candles, light fixtures, like rugs, like give us an idea of when you say home decor, like what are you? Sure. Thinking yeah. So we're looking there? at, um, laundry baskets where, uh, custom laundry baskets. We're looking at, um, like pillows, um, wood shelving, um, yeah probably tables. So we're still working on everything. It's probably going to come out later in the fall. We might do something, you know, soft over the summer, but to start okay. kind of building our vendors, but it's, um, but it'll be a lot of, you know, things like that, things that are easy, you know, easy changes to the house that, you know, yeah. if you just want to freshen something up and you don't, maybe you don't want to rip out your whole kitchen, maybe you're just ready for a little bit of refresh. Yeah. Well, I love that. That's one of the most exciting things I think about owning your own you know, construction business or working in the trades is, you know, if you can think it, you can build it, you can make it, you can sell it. Now with Instagram, Facebook, you know, when I was doing my business, there was none of that, right? right. So everything was local, right? So now you just have so much more ability to just think of ideas and opportunities and then just create them, right? And do it. So I love that. Um, and then lastly, let's talk about the show. So you have Renovation Rekindle, like yep. talk about the inspiration of that show. Um, we would love to have you come back and maybe share with uh, a little more in depth of like, how did you make that happen? Yep. But for now, just kind of talk about like, what was the inspiration of that? What do you love about it? Um, you know, what's, what's the purpose of the show? Um, you know, talk a little bit about the show itself. Yeah. Yeah. So renovation rekindle was really born of, you know, after putting so many videos out on social media and, you know, we, we would have our audience asking, Hey, we want to see homeowners. We, you know, we want to see more projects. We had a bunch of producers reach out to us about a show. We were very close to doing something with HGTV, but in the end we decided against it. It just didn't feel like the right move for us and our business. Yeah. Um, so, you know, so we're working with a producer and he, He's producing the show. So Renovation Rekindle is really following season one is 10 episodes of each episode has a complete renovation um, with a reveal. And it's just, it's really, um, you know, since doing the show, it's those are, they're all our real clients. They're all, you know, cause that's something you don't always see on those shows. It's yeah, you know, they're not their real, so real. Yeah. Right? They might not be contractors. They might not be their real clients. So, um, you know, when the show came, we were like, okay, we went back to our clients. We're like, Hey, by the way, do you want to be on a show? And they were like, yeah, maybe. So, 
<laughs> but they, you know, but they were good sports. So they're all our real clients, all our real projects okay. that, you know, that we did. Um, and it just kind of follows the journey of every, you know, of every homeowner, whether it's a kitchen renovation all the way up to, we have a couple new builds on there. So within the 10 episodes is a lot of variety, um, yeah. but it's been really cool to see our clients really be surprised and really see their space for the first time, you know, because we're filming the show, my husband would be adamant. He would paper up the windows. He changed right. the locks. And I was going to ask about like, how did they actually not see it? Yeah. Like my clients, it would not have been possible. So I love that they were game for it. Yeah. Yeah. It's um. so he, we had one client, they were living in the house that my husband built plywood walls. So, they, so they could hear us, but they couldn't see it. And, you know, they said, oh, we can't get into our garage. And he's like, nope, I changed the code. You cannot get in. Um, so, you know, so, it's, so it's almost like, it's almost, I call it Christmas for adults. You know, like you see them when they walk in the room, they're so excited. Um, yes. So it's been, it's, you know, it's been really, really awesome. And just kind of being in the room with them and feeling how, you know, what their house was before and what it means for their life now that, you know, that they have a new space. It's, it's been a really awesome experience. That's fabulous. And so, um, I think you said you can get it on, like basically go to the app and get it like on Roku, like yep. how can people watch the show basically? Yep. So if you're in new England, it airs, um, locally in new England on NECN, but anyone can watch it anywhere. Um, we have the renovation rekindle app and it's in all the app stores. Um, mm -hmm. there's no fee. There's 10 episodes on there from season one. Uh, we're okay. filming season two right now, and that's going to be coming out in the fall. Love it. I love it. That's a, what a perfect little cherry on top of this interview. I think that's fabulous. And it really shows like, it just shows there's just low, no limit to what you can do in the trades, right? And what you can do with just your own imagination. I love that. Yeah. No, it's crazy. And I, when I built my first house, I wouldn't, if you said, where are you going to be X number of years? What are you going to be doing X number yeah, of years? Four kids, now? a very <laughs> successful huge company and filming a TV show that you own and you have complete control over. Yeah. You wouldn't have thought that was possible. That was not on my list. No. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, I certainly appreciate your time. I know the ladies are going to love this. This is super interesting and creative just to see like yet another angle of ways that you can just be your best self, right? In the trades and just kind of do what you feel like doing. Um, I just have one more question or two more questions. What, what do you eat for breakfast every morning? <laughs> okay. I eat the same thing for breakfast every single day. You really? Okay. I don't eat breakfast. So I'm always looking for ideas. Okay. I wake up hungry. I'm starving when I wake up. Um, okay. so I just, I need my coffee Okay. and I need a piece of toast with peanut butter. That's, that's oh, okay. I just need yeah. that when I wake up. <laughs> Perfect. Okay. And then what's your favorite tool, your favorite, it could be a hand or a power tool. I mean, it's hard. I know that's hard because I mean the fine tool, the fine tool is amazing because it's, it's just so cool yeah nice love it that's going to be difficult to cut now we need the fine tool we need the fine tool exactly <laughs> yeah, mine's my stiletto titanium hammer so oh. that would be my favorite but nice uh, yeah awesome well thank you so much and i'm so glad that you came into the summit and it, we'd love to have you back you and your and paul sounds amazing and maybe talk yeah. about you know how you guys came up with the show and maybe some things that might help other women um, that Absolutely. have all kinds of incredible content to share. And I love that you're, you're basically controlling and producing the content. So it's authentic, it's real, it's honest, right? It's not manipulated. I love that you're doing that. Exactly. Yeah. And that was, that was why, you know, we decided not, not to go a different route because we didn't, we didn't want it to be diluted. We want to keep it yeah. authentic and, you know, and true to what we're doing. Awesome. Well, thank you for being here. Thank you so much.